I wanted to let you know that if you are seeing me, you are hearing me, it means you or someone close to you have access to a device, know how to use a device and is connected to the internet. In my daily work as a government employee and a digital specialist, I often quote that ICT is an enabler for socioeconomic development. Actually in Rwanda, ICT is a cross-cutting component to support other sector development and improve their efficiency. As a human rights activist, I know the power of digital tools in connecting people to limitless opportunities from freedom of expression, democratization of information, and knowledge acquisition. Often, a normal call or an SMS can be a life-saving to a mother in labor and her newborn in remote areas where limited access to healthcare professions is. This is the case of the rapid SMS used by health worker in Rwanda and has tremendously contributed to the reduction of child and maternal mortality by tracking mother's prenatal visit and child development milestone. Mothers like me aren't no longer traveling miles queuing to local administrative office for simple birth certificate thanks to the Rainbow e-government platform. However, this luxury is still not a common cup of coffee in many parts of the world. It's still reserved to those who have access to the tools, those who have skills, those who are empowered to use the tools. Of course, in patriarchal settings like ours, where women are left behind in so many fields, suffering from simple literacy and numeracy. Imagine now this digital literacy imposed by the global digital trend. While the glory and the transformation role of digital innovation is certain for the future, gender digital justice investment and discussion need to be centered now or women will be left behind. And this is a human rights violation leading to two world class, a world of those who have and those who don't have, a world of those who have connectivity and those who don't have, a world of those who know how to use technology and those who don't know how to use. Digitalization is leveraging digital technologies in improving and enabling processes. The digital revolution has changed the way we work, access information and connect with each other, and helping save time, money and human energy. The impact of technology on development was evident and now more than ever before, access to information and remote communication is critical due to the pandemic which has dramatically changed our way of living, working and schooling. We can't doubt the impact of technology in our daily life when we are seeing ICT in education improving the quality of learning and teaching. Digital health technologies are improving the quality of healthcare deliveries. ICT in agriculture solutions are helping rural farmers predict the weather, linking them to the market. It is evident that digital technologies can benefit women and girls in so many ways, can be leveraged for personal security, better access to education and job, financial inclusion, access to health information and more. However, benefit will rely on women having meaningful access to ICT, which can be facilitated or prevented by several factors, including affordability, relevance of the content, skills and security. It is almost impossible for me to spend a day without internet. I Google information to support my work. I search and learn legal terms to facilitate the victim I bring to justice. I use social media many times a day to claim justice, fight sexist, rapists and rape apologists, but also make institutions accountable. Last week, a simple search helped me realize that my son rush wasn't a normal rush. I took pictures, I sent to pediatrician, and I was immediately called to check in. This is what I call the power of technology to support women like me in patriarchal settings who are multitasking. But as a social activist, I have fear that women may lose their digital opportunities, and we can't afford this. Because of inequalities and disparities between men and women in terms of access to ICT, in patriarchal cultures, women are faced with so many challenges that will slow their digital inclusion, including excess of unpaid care work, illiteracy, GVV, and online harassment. Many don't have time to learn or engage in simple extra activities such as sharing coffee in a bar to discuss business. Going to a cyber cafe or a digital training may be a luxury for many. Women are the one fetching water, looking for wood to cook food, cleaning dishes, homes, clothes, including their partners' underwear and socks, plus the heavy load of childcare, caring for the sick and old members of the family. In Rwanda, a recent study by Action Aid stated that some women reported failure to engage with paid jobs because of heavy load of unpaid care work. 
on average, a woman in rural communities spends six hours on unpaid care work. A woman in district towns spends five hours on unpaid care work. And two hours women in Kigali like me. When do we want those women to get new digital skills? I equally plead decision makers, private sector, and activists to take this seriously. In Rwanda, for example, President Kagame, as a he for she global champion, committed to bridge the gender digital divide and increase the number of women in STEM, and those small steps can be scaled. The Africa Smart Women and Girls Declaration by African First Ladies signed in 2017 at the Transform Africa Summit equally is calling Africa to make sure that they increase access, affordability and safety for women and girls to use technology, empower them and give them digital skills, increase their participation in STEM. Furthermore, the SDG 5 will not be reached if women aren't digitally included as stated in its target 5B. It is simple. We need global and national partnership to make sure that we bridge the gender digital divide. We have to put in place environments which allow women to use technology, to produce technology and to feel safe. Investment in key factors to bring digital divide, to make sure that women have access to digital technologies and have the right skills. Establish enabling factors to make sure the content is inclusive relevant to different types and category of women and is affordable. Success will depend on how women are empowered. We have collectively to combat stereotypes, humping women to join STEM courses, to use digital tools and to remain in STEM fields because by women staying in STEM field, they will influence the narrative of technologies and they will enjoy this digital revolution.